I'm tired. It is the riot. Let's say hello first. Hi, everybody. You know who we are. <laughs> Welcome hello. to the podcast today. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Aren't Where's you glad it's Friday, though? Now you can be tired and you can just go home and enjoy the weekend. Oh, I got stuff to do. Well, I got to get some coffee. You know what I need to do, too? I got some web postings. We got to get we in the show today. You're going to hear a food fight and an interview. I got to get those on the We've got the that Riot going page. up through riot.radiou.com. So we checked in with Everything in Slow Motion. That's a band we play on Radio U. You'll hear Shane from the band. We also had Eric, one of our listeners, drop off the new uh, Ghost Pepper uh, Donuts from Dunkin' Donuts. So, Completely unplanned. Yeah, that was so nice of him. So we tried that. When you're done with the podcast, when you're hearing those interviews, you can hop over to Radio U Riot, follow us on our Facebook page, and you can watch us with the food fight as well. Well, those videos and our extra stuff are located on our Facebook page. Sure is cool. <laughs> so uh, thanks for taking a little time to be uh, with us today. Hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. I'm going to go get some coffee and get back to work. You want to oh, let everybody know what, what else is it, coming huh? up? <laughs> uh, stuff in it. Uh, you heard about the others. I try Genshin Impact, which is a free-to-play game that wants all your money. Uh, we talk about someone that got fired for being in an Adam Sandler movie, but wasn't Adam Sandler. Uh, some Spider-Man rumors. Something that GameStop is doing. A Sweet 16 party. That's a cautionary tale for Nikki as her 16th is approaching. <laughs> I, I don't feel like celebrating. <laughs> Just forget but it. But we can still celebrate the day, but we're just not celebrating with a party like what these people had. Celebrate the days of Reliant K song. <laughs> Is it? On their Christmas album. Oh. Yeah. So, hey, you guys have a great day. Coffee time. Thanks for listening. Enjoy the weekend. Bye. The definition of insanity is putting the riot on again and again and expecting a better result. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. Um, speaking of seeing, Nikki and I now reside behind a plexiglass shield. <laughs> do you like it or what do you think? Um, I don't like it. However, it's I understand that we the need, need it. for it. Yeah, sure. like, I mean, so it's not one of those things like, oh, the little baby doesn't like <laughs> I mean, I don't like it because I can see my reflection. Yeah. I, like, the amount of things that I see when I look over there is absurd. Well, we have, you know, our board and our equipment that's in between us, but um, basically, Obi and I face each other. We just have so many feet between us. So now there's a shield in between all of that. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, I think it's good. Yeah. I mean, it's better than I thought. I, I wasn't sure what we were going to come up with. Well, considering that Chris probably made that, he did a I, fantastic job at it. I, I think he gets a lot of credit for what he put together there. You know what I mean? I think he did a good job. So, yeah, yeah that's here. Just something extra to, to protect everybody. Yeah. I feel safer from you. Good. Good. <laughs> So that's good. I also well, that's what we wanted. We wanted to make sure that you were feeling safer for me. It also feels like I should be paying Nikki for my <laughs> gas, cigarettes, and lotto tickets. Well, it's just a straight piece of plexiglass, and so it, it would be funny if at the bottom was a little cut just a out little where, hole so yeah, I can hand you things. You know, like slide things through. Oh, if we ever do food fight items, like we can't. We're we'll gonna have to, have, to have, have everything. We'll have to have everything done already. Wow. So no more passing things across the board. <laughs> thought they were bad live? Well, just wait until you hear this. The Worst of the Riot Podcast with Obadiah and Nikki. So I uh, dove into last night, I mean, only for about an hour, but I downloaded what has become one of the most popular free-to-play games in the world, Genshin Impact. It's the one we talked about earlier this week that they made $100 million in a week. Uh, two weeks, remember? Two and weeks, And that was right. just from people in the United States. So not even worldwide. They making the money. Yeah. Uh, so I on decided, a free game. <laughs> I decided to check it out. First off, wow, it is an amazing looking game. Is it? Is the it, art and stuff impressive? Yeah, that's what I couldn't believe. I'm like, wait, this is. I mean, they're gonna get you later, but right now, I surprised at how free this is. And of course, as you're playing, you're, I'm surprised at how like, oh, it it, it works. Okay. <laughs> So they haven't asked me to put my credit card in to walk yet, but I'm sure it's coming. I'm sure they'll get you in far enough to be attached to the game. Exactly. And then they said that, or at least some of you guys were, were messing us when we were, when we were talking earlier, messaging us that you hit a point where you want to move forward. You really do need to put some money in it. Well, you need uh, more characters yeah. and characters of a certain level. And so you have to, um, well, 
put you, money in. <laughs> you got to put some money in. You got to roll. Now, I've been listening to uh, some friends who said that they've spent, uh, what, like, they haven't spent any money on it, but they have played probably about 20 hours of it. Uh, so, but eh. is it a type of game where it just keeps going or? I don't know. Like, it's it looks and feels somewhat, a lot of people keep saying it feels a lot like Breath of the Wild. Uh, but it's one of those things that I wanted to get a look at it. I don't think I'm going to put any more time into it. Uh, I think instead I'm just going to try to find something that looks similar that I can just pay or play similar, uh, or, uh, I can like that. I can just pay for up front. Yeah, I gotcha. Uh, because the thing, this is a game that is designed to get you to gamble like that. That's it. They want to get their hooks into you early and then you will just be like, eh, what's five more dollars? What's <laughs> ten more dollars? But again, a couple of podcasts I listened to, the one guy said, yeah, I didn't put any money into it. But he had a friend who was like, I dropped five dollars and then one hundred and fifty dollars later. Oh, it just gets away from you. Aww. Yeah. And I mean, I don't there are probably there are some things in life I have poor impulse control on. That is not one of them. So you should. Yeah, you don't even want to get I, into it if you know that uh, that's what's coming. Yeah, I just wanted to get a look at it, and it was like, yeah, I mean, credit where credit's due. It looks really awesome. And what is it called again? It's called Genshin Impact. Genshin Impact. Yeah, and I mm, I don't think so, Nikki. Well, at least you tried it, but I, you I know wanted... what's coming, so you just got to be prepared if you want to get into a game like that. I know. I, I don't think I do. But some people don't mind paying a little money here and there for the game. Well, you know what? Again, I don't mind putting some money into video games. I like to play them. So, you know, it's a hobby of sorts where just, I don't make anything. He just has a lot of other games that he yeah. already paid for that he doesn't need to keep paying during. The idea of a game that's designed to trick me into paying as much as possible. <laughs> if it's louder than it has to be and way worse than it has any right to be, it must be the worst of the riot. On Radio U. Oh, so privileged Yay. this morning. I feel like it's been a while since we checked in with Shane from Everything in Slow Motion, so today's the day. Good morning, Shane. Good morning. Today is the day, for sure. <laughs> so today, you release a full-length project, yeah. right? Influence is out today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this will be the second full-length um, album from Everything in Slow Motion, so... We've done a couple EPs and have had a pretty long gap in between records at this point. So uh, pretty stoked to get this thing out right now. So now, since this is your sophomore project, do you feel, <laughs> Full is, project, do yeah. you feel as much you know, pressure about album number two? Or are you just like, eh, whatever, we've done this? I mean, yeah, I don't feel that pressure at all. It's like if this was a band where, where album sales and all that stuff was kind of dictating our, our lives it might be different um but this is just like something that we all do kind of on the side and uh you know what i mean so they, there's not that much pressure it's just kind of like at this point we're creating the albums that we want to create because we love to do it um because it's kind of our way of uh you know being uh being creative and and uh journaling and everything else it's kind of this this is what we do yeah. so you know there's no uh whether it, it sells 10 copies or 10,000 copies probably won't make a whole lot of difference to us <laughs> well point, i'm so. sure shane would like you to lean towards the one number compared to the other one so yeah, hopefully I mean, we can go the other way the ladder, that's great <laughs> i appreciate that you know but uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Well, so. We're, so, we're doing our part today, maybe not helping with the sales part, at least for the giveaway, but it is New Music Friday with everything in slow motion. So make sure you listen all day today for your chance to win downloads of the new project Influence. So with this album, what I mean, you know, I feel like it's the question we kind of have to ask everybody, but you're putting out music during this pandemic. Like how has 2020 affected the process for you guys on making your music? Uh, I don't think it has because the same, I mean, as far as this record goes, the same could be said for 2019 and 2018, uh, given that it's taken two years to make this record. Okay. <laughs> so okay. There's an argument for any of those years being equally as, uh, limiting, you know? So, okay. um, I mean, right now it's just kind of, we had this album pretty close to being in the bag by the beginning of 2020. So it was just kind of like preparing for, we did a face down records fest, like a, a show out in California 
uh, in early March, which was kind of like we kind of did it at the last weekend that you could really have shows right. in the U.S. Like it was really at the last minute. So we were gearing up for that. And then um, after that show and lockdown hits everywhere, um, I mean, from that point on, it was kind of in uh, Nate Washburn's hands. He's the guy that uh, produced and mixed it for us and, you know, engineered it. So um, it was just him engi- uh, him mixing and putting everything together and uh, us just trying to get everything else right and lined up so, so we could submit for release. So, I mean, it hasn't really been that crazy. I think the, the biggest thing that feels weird is that there's no, like, CD release show. You yeah. Know? Uh, we, were, we were planning on uh, having some sort of, show or celebration of some sort and um that's not really the case so and that's okay we'll figure that out (laughs) that can be that can be a later thing in honor still looking back at today for everything in slow motion you know it's been interesting with a lot of our bands um i think during quarantine and covid with not having shows it has still shown that bands especially ones that aren't next to each other you know like not all the members or the producers live in the same area where you go back a few years everyone really had to practice together be around stay together but now bands can be across the country still make that same you know level of music and still get it out even though you you can't tour you can't you know physically be around each other right yeah for sure so and with everything in slow motion it's been easier i mean over uh, i mean with this entire project because there's never really been like a band band you know like the 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 band band like the group of guys will play shows every once in a while um and and do the things as they come but for the most part everything in slow motion's just kind of been a writing project you know and i'll start something and then uh try and rope in you know a couple other people to maybe maybe uh uh figure it out with me you know and and luckily like with this album it's been real hands-on with uh my drummer aaron crawford good friend of mine and he's been in town uh, he lives in the same town as me so uh, you know it's just it's yeah i mean you can do anything from anywhere yes. yeah. <laughs> with anyone like, it's true and uh, it's true it's all good so well, this is Shane from Everything in Slow Motion. Their new album is out today. Even though you don't get to have a new release show and even though you can't get together with a band, I hope you find something cool and rewarding to yeah, do today that you can anyway. Do, that's fun today. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually jumping on the road to uh, drive to Atlanta today. <laughs> so as soon as I get off uh, the phone with you guys, um, I'm going to pack up a few things and uh, and hit the road. So right it'll on. be good. Um Nate, as I said, the guy that that produced and engineered the album, um, also plays guitar in My Epic. So I think Radio U listeners would would know him from that. But uh, we're just going to, it's his birthday weekend, um, and it's album release weekend, and we are just going to celebrate. So, you know, um, it's going to be awesome. So we're doing something. So it doesn't involve everyone, but we're doing something. <laughs> oh, that's good, so. at least. Well, tell Nate we said hello, and, and we hope the, the weekend's fun then. Whatever you guys decide to do. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Yeah! <laughs> you were one of the lucky few who missed the riot when they were live. Yet here you are. I also like to live dangerously. This is the worst of the riot podcast. Nikki, you and I are getting closer and closer to just not needing to be here and i don't mean because <laughs> phoning like it we, in or what nope, do you mean <laughs> i mean djs are going to be a thing of the past oh really here we go you ready what are the things that we do we provide music we well, do now you can subscribe to a streaming service you get your music right but one of the things that we provide a service that i feel like is often underappreciated but is a significant part of the job and that is the phone call or the email even sometimes the text message there's this song that goes da 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 da. <laughs> you played it for a hot minute in 2002. Oh, you don't understand. You guys will message us to try to find out songs from years and years so and years ago. Long ago. You had plenty of time <laughs> to ask us earlier than when you're asking us, but we always try our best. It's just sometimes they're really older songs. Right. So Google has just announced a little something they're calling Hum to Search. It's something they've added to the Google app where you can search for a song and you can hum or sing the tune and it for 10 to 15 seconds and it will try to find the song. That's a great idea. It's 
wild. I don't know how successful it'll be, honestly, because we've also, you know, been the, I feel like the uh, the demo for that program, sure. you know, when you guys try to admit to us, but. Yeah, you guys don't know how many times <laughs> we just end up Googling things. I know when you guys ask us these questions. Yeah, uh, but it, when I look at this, it it's fascinating that it worked. Now, Radio U, I think, is an edge case because for us, Man, the music that we play has a tendency to be, I mean, we've got some mainstream-ish stuff, but then the further back you go, the harder it is to get a hold of some of our stuff. It just was so, never never put online with lyrics or, you right. know, just sometimes even the song itself. So if you go back too far, you just, there's nothing to find. You and I might be safe, but, you know, people at, say, a top 40 station, mm-hmm. you're, you're done. It's over. <laughs> It's it's going to be niche do it without you or nothing kind of thing. But, That's a cool idea. So can, uh, instead of like with Siri, you could always just say, hey, and then play a little bit of the right. song. Yep. This is from you humming it That's in case right. you don't even have the song or singing it or singing you it can, too. you can sing a little bit of it and then it will do its best to try to find it for you. Now, I haven't tried it yet, so you have to wonder if the results are any good, but I'm sure they're fine. Better than nothing. Fine. <laughs> That's all you need. All right. That's all they're looking for. Just try to get close to it. Whoa! <laughs> See, do you think that we get it from that? I don't no, think I think it, it would. needs more than that. Maybe the riot would sound better if they spent less time improving their lives at their gym. That was sarcasm. It's the riot on Radio U. So, Nikki, how do you feel about, let's say, Christmas? Christmas, always in. We're ready. Everybody wait while the drive spins up. <laughs> so we're always good for we're always good for Christmas. All right. Uh, how do you feel about Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer? Not my favorite character, but no? still a vital part of the Christmas story. Like, do you sit down and watch the 1964 nah. Claymation? No. No. If anything, I stick with snowmen. Okay. <laughs> it's just sure. closest to polar bears, I guess, in the winter. <laughs> I don't know. When I was a little kid, I watched Rudolph a bunch. Yeah. Like, I remember watching that a lot on, uh, I don't know, whatever. Uh, but I I guess I'm a fan. I actually have, I can't remember where I was a few years ago, but I bought this big set of Rudolph figurines as like a Christmas decoration. So in front of my TV, there are the I'll put out these tiny little Rudolph figurines yeah. that will sit there and I put some lights on it and stuff like that. Um, but the actual like back in the day Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. TV show? Right. From 1964. I, I know what it looks like. I right. mean, I think everybody's probably seen it at some point. So, I mean, you know, that was claymation and et cetera, et cetera. Well, one of the actual guys like the actual dolls uh models that was used is going up for sale oh how much will that bring the santa one (laughs) and the rudolph one so from the uh claymation one back in the day you can buy one of the claymation props the the figurines the models now it says here that they were made of wood wire cloth and leather Mm -hmm. uh rudolph rudolph's nose after some minimal maintenance still lights up cute um and santa's beard is made of actual yak hair so it's uh it's as bushy as ever that was back in the day where you could probably you know you could have done and used anything for it well it's fascinating (laughs) these uh they were made by japanese puppet maker ichiro kimuro uh which uh wow they and they filmed used for filming of the show at mom productions in tokyo that's interesting. I did not realize that uh, they actually created that in Japan. Hmm. So uh, the company that ended up making it became Rankin Bass Entertainment. And, of course, there are a lot of things that you see, like, they're old, but they that come from that company. So, uh, What do they and, think it'll get, then, if they're going to be selling these or auctioning them off? They think they will bring in between $150 and $250. That's thousand, it? Oh. Thousand dollars. <laughs> 
like, well, that's a lot of talk for nothing, right? We could pay for them. We could actually get these. <laughs> I, man, I paid 30 bucks for just that Rudolph set. I know. It seems a bit low, but okay, so the uh, $130,000, that's more like it. Mm-hmm. Or they say up to 250000 If you were a fan of Christmas and you had some fond memories and maybe that was something that was a show when you were young and you have a lot of extra money... <laughs> Well, First off, hello. <laughs> We're here too. And second, that's great. You could go ahead and get these. So that show is 56 years old. Yeah. And so you figure 56 years old, let's say that you were six year old years old when you saw it back in the 60s. You're now 62 and probably in a position to have some cold, hard cash. Well, I don't know about hundreds of hundreds of thousands of it. But They're out there, Nikki. You could get it if you want. They're out there. Oh, uh, fun. The Riot really wanted to do this live, but now they can play video games and eat rice cakes instead. This is the worst of the Riot podcast. Science! (laughs) It's all for science, right? It's important, Nikki. It's It's for you guys, too, because we want to make sure that you know how our thoughts are on this. (laughs) So So we'll eat plenty of donuts for you. (laughs) With a special thanks to Eric, who we couldn't even greet at the door because COVID. Aw, he was so sweet. He brought us uh, from Dunkin' Donuts. They announced, I think they started going out on Wednesday of this week. I believe so. And I think they go through some part in December. So you get actually a pretty good amount of time for the Dunkin' Donuts ghost pepper donut that they have. Spicy ghost pepper. Spicy one. Now, I, I you know what? I should have put it up so you could see it on the stream. We are streaming on Facebook right now uh, <laughs> because the in the phone. Photo, it is like the most jam packed. Uh, oh, it looks hot. You know, like the sprinkles look intense. Yes. And uh, when this... I looked at it, you know, here it's uh, even the icing is pretty thin. Oh. <laughs> and the sprinkles don't look much. And I thought the heat would come from the sprinkles, not the icing, but I don't uh, know where it is. No, I think. Uh... I don't remember. <laughs> I can't remember. Either way, you could take quite a few bites of this and not hit anything except uh, the donut part. <laughs> okay, so let's get a smell test here. It, smells it just fine. smells sweet. It doesn't smell hot or anything. Right. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Do you think okay. it's really hot or? No. Mm. Okay, it's sweet. Mm-hmm. Our first. The icing's good on it. What oh, flavor is there's that? There's the heat. You feel a little bit of it, but it's good. I don't spice, like it. You know, <laughs> no. Because it's you know spicy what? or what? Well, you know what? Okay. I don't mind spicy food. I don't really like peppers very much. Um, oh, look, Even I got a little, peppers? I got a little itch don't right here. Don't rub your eyes. Don't rub your eyes. Um, just the flavor of pepper. Like even a green pepper or whatever. I mean, yeah. if I'm, I'll eat it. You know, I'll put it in a salad or something like that. But Well, that's it's hotter a, than I thought it would be, but yeah. the heat is super fast. So if you don't like a lot of hot stuff, it's not. it doesn't feel like it'll linger for too long. I do feel like you could fake somebody out with it because it doesn't smell hot. No. And you're, you could, I mean, it's like a second or two before the heat hits. Yeah, it's good. I, I, I don't mind it. Would I have a dozen of them? No, but uh, <laughs> it's good to try to at least say you had it. I mean, in fairness, it's right there in the title, ghost pepper, but I don't like the pepper flavor. And I wonder. And it real, you know what? I really taste like it tastes like a pepper. It is. It is a little spicier than you thought it would be. But, I mean, but not it's just the, the spice. I mean, like the actual flavor. Oh, of you a think pe- so? Oh, totally. See, I'm not getting totally. that as much probably with the icing with it. What flavor do you think the icing's supposed to be? I, strawberry. Strawberry. Ah, oh, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Um, In the it, pictures, it, it, we thought yesterday, like, oh, you could totally prank someone and make them think it was like a peppermint sort of donut or something, oh, yeah. but not when you actually look at it in person. It's technically called the Spicy Ghost Pepper Donuts, mm-hmm. and it's the... The it strawberry is nice with it. The topping is a blend of cayenne and ghost pepper. Mm. So, by again, by the topping, is it is it the sprinkles, you think? Not sure. Not sure oh. where it's supposed to come from. Okay, here's the description. A yeast donut ring. Glazed with strawberry flavored icing, topped with a blend of cayenne, ghost pepper, and red sanding sugar. Sanding sugar, sugar, that's it. Okay. So next time, Duncan, you could be a little bit more generous with the sanding sugar. (laughs) Yeah. I like cayenne. I love to go, uh, like, to cook with that or, like, flavor chicken with it and stuff. But it's the pepper part of it that I'm like, "Eh." Well, if you don't like hot stuff, don't be afraid of it. It's It's not anything that would... 
damage you. <laughs> You'll be fine. It's pretty yeah, good. The strawberry taste with it's really nice. Yeah, it is. Though, again, I'd rather just have a strawberry donut. <laughs> you don't want any of the or other stuff. In the, you had the chocolate topped one, but I just had a straight glazed donut. I haven't had Dunkin' Donuts in approximately 560 years. And so... We're back in. It was pretty good. <laughs> Eric, thank you again so much for bringing the spicy Dunkin' Donuts ghost pepper donuts. Bringing the heat. Thanks for bringing that into us. You are appreciated. We would give the riot flowers to show our appreciation, but Obadiah's probably allergic. What isn't he allergic to? This is the riot on Radio U. You know, it's a pretty good time to be a Spider-Man fan. Like, Spider-Man's had a run of hit movies. You had Homecoming and you had... The other. Far From Home. Mm -hmm. Then let's not forget about one of the most amazing animated movies ever. Yeah, actually, was that two years ago that that came out or one year ago? I believe it was a year ago this last Christmas. So let's say it's. I love that one. Yeah, almost two years ago. It'll be two years this Christmas. So good. So good. Spider Man into the Spider Verse. Mm -hmm. And so, with all of that, plus the Spider Man game and et cetera, et cetera, whatever. There is a rumor floating that is amazing. You ready? Yeah. Word is that the next Spider-Man movie is going to be like a multiverse Spider-Man thing. Yeah. Which we've heard rumors that uh, Jamie Foxx is going to come back as um, Shocker. Is it Shocker? Who is? I can't remember. Electro. Yeah. That's what it is. And is he come back? Doctor Strange will be in it. Right. And he, Electro, was in Amazing Spider-Man 2, which is technically not related to the current Spider-Man movies. But the rumor is that Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield oh, will, they'll come? <laughs> will be reprising their roles as Spider-Man in the new- Spider-Man 3. So it'll have all three of them in there? Shut that could be good. Oh. That's why you never, for movie studios, you never want to burn the bridges of the past characters, you know, the actors and stuff, because mm-hmm. you would want them to come back. That'd be fun to see all three. That is such a fantastic idea. I really hope that happens. Really <laughs> hope that happens. Is it a pretty pretty confirmed rumor or, you know, like coming from a source that okay. pretty, pretty much gets it right? It. It is looking very likely. You know, it's not guaranteed. You know, there's no guarantees, Nikki. Of course. Uh, not in it, this world. Not in, No, it's not. That's nope, right. Nope. Not here. Uh, but it's looking very likely to be true. That'd it's be an still, awesome idea. It's still a rumor. Here's what I love is I've looked at a couple of, you know, like nerdy news sources and they're, they're like, it's confirmed by reports. No, I don't feel like it works that way until so the studio says it. Uh, and even after they say it. Yeah. Ah. yeah, you just want to make sure. But that's the rumor that oh, we can Nic- see them. Nicole just texted. She says, I so hope that is happening. I know. Me too. <laughs> I think it would be awesome. So, so when do you think a Spider-Man movie would come out, though? Because, I mean, they're just talking. And talking right now because of COVID stuff means usually late 21, 22, 2023. 2020, <laughs> 2022 if we're lucky. I think we're just all really wanting it to just make sure it's in our lifetime. <laughs> I Here's what I think about COVID in general. The thing that I keep coming down on. We go one of two ways. Either we go into, and maybe these are, these are probably too extreme, but uh, we go into a world where we just continue to just shut down, which eventually is not sustainable. Sure. Uh, or we go into a place where a bunch of people just go, ah! covid whatever and they just i guess well, keep at, doing the movies anyway at first i thought it was more like they can't film movies but that's not true uh, most movies are actually currently filming right now it's just they can't release them they can't release them because there's no theater stuff you guys yeah. can't go to theaters in the amount of uh people that they want to go to theaters um so they're I mean, they can film the movie. It just doesn't mean it's going to come out. So Randall says he thinks this sounds good, but Andrew Garfield was the weakest of the three, and he's wrong. Uh, and then Josh says, Spider-Ham, please. <laughs> I'm Spider-Ham? With you. Yeah, Spider-Ham, the little pick Spider-Man. Yeah, that could get in there. <laughs> I'm on board. Let's do that. Well, that's a, a rumor I think a lot of Spider-Man fans would like. Yeah. If you missed out on the next riot moment when it originally aired, you don't know how lucky you are. You're listening to the Worst of the Riot Podcast. In what I can only say was a moment of honesty in which she was not ashamed, 
Nikki came in this week to tell us that she watched the new Adam Sandler movie. On I did. Netflix. The, is it what was it? Hubie Halloween or whatever? Yeah. What's that about? Um, he it, it's basically one of his. It seems like it's one of his characters from SNL. Okay. Like it's a, a base off of that. Yeah. Um, and he is the town sort of. Um, excited Halloween guy? Yeah, but like everybody makes fun of him and throws things at him. But then in the end, he's the one that saves them from a lack of Halloween spirit? No, he like kind of saves the town because there's a mystery that goes on. Uh, And it's him and like every other person who's ever been in an Adam Sandler movie. Sure. And it it wasn't good, but there were funny parts to it, which makes Adam Sandler movies like perfectly fine. It was a fun thing to watch. And the part that you and I never think about, but is at the heart of it all is... They all got paid. Yeah. All of them got paid. To be in the movie? Mm Mm-hmm. I would think that'd be right. Oh, what I mean is, no matter what you thought about that movie, (laughs) they still got paid to make it. He does really well for Netflix. He does. He has a distribution deal through them, so it's not like Netflix just chose this out of his movies. He makes movies for them. Well, Nikki, I will tell you that it hasn't worked out really well for everybody, including Elena Pinto. Uh, Elena is a or was a news anchor Mm -hmm. in Boston who appeared in this Adam Sandler film. She was dressed as Harley Quinn. Okay, that was actually a really good joke. They had like all the women in these shots dressed as Harley Quinn. Yeah. Because whenever you get to Halloween, that's all. Yeah, that's all everyone is. It was hilarious. (laughs) Well, she just lost her job over that. Oh, really? She did because in her contract, she's not allowed to appear in a movie uh, like that? In a movie that? like that. Well, and I would so, have thought they would have worked with the news station to make that happen. So did I. I I actually thought, like, oh, they're probably part of a promotional whatever. Yeah, like everybody would have been aware. Nope. Uh, she got the part independently, and she has lost her job as a result. Which I will say, there's part of me that gets that. And I even think sometimes when I'm watching TV, and, like, I've seen Wolf Blitzer in a couple movies where he's you know, giving the news and Mm -hmm. this thing is that, you know, as a news organization, I don't think I would want my reporter being a part of anything fictionalized Mm -hmm. because the idea is that when you see that reporter somewhere inside, you should trigger the idea that they are going to tell me the facts, the truth, the whatever. And so instead you're giving me them and are they, are they a journalist or they are an entertainer. Yeah, but if you see what her part is, I, it's so short and little, like, it really shouldn't be a big thing. But if her contract states otherwise, then it is a big thing. Well, it's not a, to be clear, I'm not defending the news station or whatever. It's just that when I think about it from an editorial perspective, mm-hmm. I kind of get it. Because, again, you don't want there to be, in a world where nobody believes the news anymore, you want to try to protect what little bit of journalistic integrity you that have left. there might left. be, yeah. Yeah. So, I, I, oh, I it's mean. it's too bad for her, but I'm sure she'll find something else. Because, again, she was in the movie. She can use that. Uh, well, there's, oh, my gosh. Only one day a year to sh- well, I won't say it out loud. Don't want to ruin your joke for you. Uh, so you can join Nikki with her Netflix watch party this weekend. Uh, no, I already watched it. That was the one where I watched it and we had evening pizza and wings. evening chicken wings that I made and pizza. And it was the best. And that also might have made the Adam Sandler movie a little better because food will do that. Nikki was drunk on night wings. Is it healthy eating so many snacks, chips and Oreos every single morning? No, of course not. But they do it for you. Not too many guys got their stomach for this line of work. That's real love. It's the riot on Radio U. GameStop. You love them. You hate them. They're just there. It's like school. It doesn't go away. It just <laughs> you don't go, but <laughs> it's just there. <laughs> just doesn't do anything. Uh, people do go to GameStop, but a lot of people, myself included, are like, "Man, GameStop is on life support at best." It's had a tough couple of years, especially for the employees. Uh, it's been hard, and when you go in, I don't know if that reflects in every time I've gone. It's been a while, but when I do go in, no one there seems happy. They don't want to be there. They don't want to seem to be working, and. It shows. <laughs> so you just leave. You're like, that's why I just get it online. <laughs> it the the thing to me about GameStop is just that I my lasting frustration with them is they bought ThinkGeek. Mm-hmm. And on on paper it kind of made sense. 
hey, we've got all these retail establishments. You've got all these cool things. We'll put your cool things in our retail establishments. But instead, they bought them up, put their quote-unquote cool things in GameStop stores, and then no one bought them. And so then they took down it. So Think Geek got torpedoed. And destroyed what was a strong thing. And pulled down with them. Now, here's some GameStop news, though, that, Nikki, they could be looking a little happier. Uh, GameStop apparently has cut a deal uh, that'll keep the empire out of here forever. No, they've cut a deal with Microsoft that for every Xbox Mm -hmm. that GameStop sells... The Xbox Series X and the Xbox Series S, Mm -hmm. they get a cut of every digital game sale, every piece of DLC, every (gasps) everything. Tied into the sale of that Xbox? That's right. So they can track that Xbox and what it then buys? Oh, yeah. That, that well, they can do that su- anyway. That doesn't surprise me. That, I'm sure that's just a serial number oh. or whatever. So but, then if you take, if you buy from GameStop your Xbox, you go home, it just, they get a cut of all that stuff. That's right. So you go home and you buy things from the Xbox store digitally, ah. then they get a cut of that sale. So what does that mean? Like, is that going to make GameStop employees more motivated to sell the boxes? Oh, I don't think it's going to matter on that front. I, I don't think you can... Speaking of someone that spent plenty of time in retail, you can't motivate me to anything. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, you're right. Like there's no you're not gonna <laughs> you're not gonna make it better. Now, if if you yourself as an employee were getting a cut from everything that that Xbox oh, got, oh, now we're getting then somewhere. You'd be motivated, but you're just you're helping the man, the man. Then <laughs> that's that's not a thing. Oh wow! But this is something that probably will help keep GameStop around. Though, and it makes sense. I mean, Microsoft needs some places to sell their Xboxes. Though one would think that a Target, Walmart, Best Buy... Would be a bigger deal that for that them. That would be enough, but uh, they're they're sticking with GameStop at least Guess for a while. Guess we'll see how that goes. Worst of the Riot Podcast. The world is a strange place. I know and have seen... Okay, we probably all have. Hopefully your grandparents. I know it's not for everybody, but... You know, you see couples that are like old, and let's be honest, they've gotten old and maybe they're not the best looking in the traditional sense. But for some reason, they love each other and they're happy. Aww. And you're just like, what? I, he's not good looking enough for you to love him. You need to get a younger model. <laughs> She's not rich enough for you guys to be enjoying your life. You should find somebody with more money. And yet you turn on your TV and you find very good looking people <laughs> with a lot of money that don't like each other and are very unhappy. Like what? You just don't know. <laughs> I think it goes to show you that a lot of times one of the biggest struggles we have in life is there's what we think will make us happy and then what will actually make us happy and sometimes these are not the same thing so we could spend our entire life spinning our wheels going crazy looking for that thing or we could ask we could we could maybe look in a different way bottom line i'm trying to get to here is that god knows what you need now, i'm not saying god's always about making you happy constantly all the time you know you're still going to be living life here on planet earth You might have to get up at 4 a.m. and go to work. (laughs) I don't know who I'm talking about right now. There is still just normal stuff. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, like, that stuff's not going to go away. But when I'm talking about kind of that lasting happiness, that lasting life, joy, that thing, uh, we're looking for it in a lot of places. And I just feel like we, we really might be looking in the wrong places. You know, and again, you know, a bunch of money. Yeah, you're going to have fun for a while. But I'm talking about down the line. Some other stuff, satisfaction, that that deep level stuff that we're all looking for. Listen, I don't know what it looks like for you exactly, uh, but I know who it looks like for you. And that's found in a relationship with Jesus. He wants to teach you how to live. He wants to forgive you. He wants to heal you. He wants to help you. And he wants to show you, uh, instead of wasting life trying to figure it out, he could give you some information up front, and we could front load this thing in a really great way. Say, Jesus, I want that. I want you in my life. I want you to fill me with your spirit. And I want to know how to live, because what I'm doing right now isn't working. (laughs) And God's going to show you. 
Are people really still listening to the riot? You don't have work to do or laundry to fold or literally anything else to do? The Riot Radio U. So, um, well, let me think, Nikki. Do you want to talk about? Sure, why not? <laughs> Would you give me the choice then? Um, I, I lean towards you, though, like what, whatever you want. Nikki's Sweet 16 party is coming up in a couple of months. Well, hopefully so. And With I, a small amount of people. <laughs> I wasn't going to bring it up, but uh, when I see this other <laughs> Sweet 16 party in the news... I feel like it's my duty to at least Warm say people. Is this the something. bad one with all the COVID cases from it? The Diamond Sweet 16. So this party has, man, what a party. I was on Long Island and the fine, just the fine for the party was $12,000. Because they had too many people over what a party should have. Really, I think it's like 50 for that area and... They had close to 100 uh, students, like high schoolers. And then they had people outside of that, too. Crazy. And they've had an outbreak of COVID cases from it. So check this out. They have had right now, uh, this was as of last night, they have had 37 people that have COVID from this party. Now, keeping in mind that that number Earlier in the day yesterday was 24. So it's going up pretty quickly. So the number has been going up. Uh, and you got 37 people infected. And they're saying that it has led to 270 people having to be quarantined mm -hmm. as a result of this party. Because if you look at the overlap yeah. of all the different people that attended this thing. Was it at a house or was it at a... It was at a country club You would think they like would have that. been following the, rules, but... The it... Miller Place Inn. So are they the ones who have to pay the fine or is it the people who threw the party? That's a great idea and I don't know. Our question, I don't have the answer. I would be very curious to find out who would have to be responsible for it because... If you're talking about, like, say you had it at a country club, they have their rules that they have to follow, and they should right. they should have known that and should not have allowed the party to go on if it was going to have that many people. Hey, listen, I'm DJing a wedding next weekend, mm -hmm. and I was talking to them last night about their wedding and what the COVID kind of protocols were. Yeah, the were. rules are. Everyone has to wear a mask, and they were not going to allow dancing. Oh, really? And now they are, but you have to wear a mask. Yeah, while you're dancing. Yeah. So uh, that was, it was interesting to me that like that was a thing for a while that it was like, yeah, we're not even going to do dancing. Oh, this. yeah. But with the mask, it should be fine. Yeah, they're gonna no go. one wants to be the source of an outbreak. You don't want to be the person no. who did all no. that. So, uh, well, in this case, I don't have the name of the girl, but it's her fault. She I did doubt it. that's why they're probably not going to say because she's no, she's underage. Well, she's underage. <laughs> so, so they can't do tell that. everybody. But, but you a, know who it is, especially if you're in that area. Well, you would at, know. <laughs> at least 270 people have got firsthand knowledge of it. Because that is, uh, that's where the outbreak happened. Oh, man. And like, man, this COVID stuff is sucking again, guys. I saw yesterday in Ohio, they just had, yesterday was the highest number of new cases of COVID-19. Record setting. Ever. Mm -hmm. Dang it. This was the worst of the riot, and we'd like to congratulate you on having the stomach to stick around to the very end. The riot exists because Radio U exists, and Radio U only exists because of your support. Find out more and give now at RadioU.com slash donate. Where Nikki's hoes at?